class. Today's lesson will be, we'll continue with chapter two exercises. So if you'll hold on with me just a minute, I'm gonna share my screen with you. So I'm gonna be going through a couple of exercises with you. Um, I've created an Excel spreadsheet for these exercises and I've labeled each one of the pages down here. So I wanted to point that out to you before I got started because when I save these and give them to you, they'll all be in one file, but you'll have each one of these pages that you'll want to look at for each one of these exercises. In this first exercise, we're going to be the Orender Company. And they have given us some following information for the last calendar year. They've given beginning inventory amounts as well as ending inventory amounts for both direct materials and work in process. They've also given us the information um, that says during the year, direct materials purchases amounted to 275,800. Direct labor cost was 153,000 and overhead cost was 267,300 and that there were 25,000 units produced. What they want you to find in this case is the unit manufacturing cost. But before you can do that, you really need to find the total cost of goods manufactured. So I've laid this out for you once again to find your cost of goods manufactured. You first need to determine your direct materials that you've used. So we're gonna start with our beginning inventory which was given the beginning materials inventory. We're gonna to add to that the purchases, which was also given. And when we add those two together, that will give us the materials that are available uh, for use. And then we're gonna back out the ending inventory, which was given, and that will leave us with the cost of materials used for production. Once you find the cost of materials used for production, you're gonna to add to it the direct labor that was given and the uh, overhead, which they call this manufacturing overhead at 267,300, that too was given. These three costs are combined together to get the total manufacturing cost. We're gonna back out our beginning work in process that was given here. And we're going to, excuse me, we're gonna to add to that our beginning working process. We're gonna back out our ending working process, which was 30,600. When you take your total manufacturing cost, you add the beginning working process and subtract the ending working process, it'll leave you with the cost of goods manufactured. That's the total cost of the goods manufactured. Now what they want is unit manufacturing cost. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the total of my cost of goods manufactured during that month. I'm gonna divide it by the number of units produced, which were 25,000, and that will give me a total manufacturing cost per unit of $28.40. And that's all there is to this exercise. So I'm gonna look at the next exercise with you, which is exercise 2.4. Remember they're on sheets on this Excel spreadsheet workbook. So click on the sheet and scroll up to the top and you'll see that we're working on exercise 2.4. In the instructions it says, last year Orson Company produced 25,000 juicers and they sold 26,500 juicers for $60 each. That $60 is the selling price. The actual variable unit cost is as follows. We have direct materials. The unit cost is $16. Direct labor, the unit cost is $5.30 and variable factory overhead, which is 2.9 or $2.90. The variable selling expense is $2.40. Combine all these together and that'll give you the total unit variable cost. 
Notice there was a variable selling expense that went in there, but be careful because what they're going to ask you for is your manufacturing cost. And if it's a selling expense, it's a period cost and it doesn't belong in here. So we're going to watch out for that one. Uh, they're telling you that you had fixed overhead of 320000 You have some fixed selling expenses that consisted of advertising co-payments that totaled 110000 Fixed administrative expenses were 236000 There were no beginning and ending working process inventories. It's important to note that. The beginning finished goods inventory was $148,000 for 4,000 units that were in the beginning finished goods inventory. The value of the ending inventory reported on the financial statement was, they want to know what the value of the finished goods inventory is. Now, unfortunately, your textbook just said the value of ending inventory, but I want to emphasize to you that it is finished goods inventory that we're gonna be looking for. Now, there's probably a couple of different ways you could calculate this, but what I started with were my total unit cost for my manufacturing cost. Only the manufacturing cost did I include here, which were for direct materials, your direct labor, and your variable overhead. Notice these are variable manufacturing costs, and if you total those up, it's $24.20. Each one of these were given, you just had to total the, the uh, amount for the total variable cost per unit. Also, you need to calculate your total manufacturing fixed cost per unit. The total manufacturing fixed cost per unit is the total fixed cost divided by the units produced. So if you take the total uh, fixed cost which would be uh, in the amount of 320,000, that was a given amount, was the total fixed cost, fixed overhead cost. It is overhead we're talking about here. That we are dividing by the units produced and they gave us the amount of the units produced. And this problem, the units produced was 25,000 juicers that they produced. So if you divide the total fixed overhead of 320,000 by the number of units produced, it will give you the fixed cost per unit. And that fixed cost per unit is $12.80. What they wanted you to determine was the value of the ending fixed uh, finished goods inventory. You can't do that until you figure out what your manufacturing cost is per unit. And so to find the manufacturing cost per unit, I add all of my variable costs per unit with my fixed cost per unit, and that will give you $37 as the manufacturing cost per unit. This is what it costs you to manufacture one of the items that we are manufacturing, one of the products. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your total manufacturing cost, and to get that, you will take your total manufacturing cost per unit, which we found was $37. We would multiply that by the number of units produced, and that was a given amount of 25,000 units. So 37 times 25,000 units is how we get the total manufacturing cost for this company. To that, we would add our beginning working process cost and, our, and we would back out our ending working process cost and that will leave us with our cost of goods manufactured because we had no beginning working process or ending working process the cost of goods manufactured is equal to the total manufacturing cost. So that's the first part that, that I would determine to help me to determine the overall uh, unit cost of my finished goods inventory. You might remember that finished goods inventory become a part of cost of goods sold. 
So the next step that I would do is I would determine my cost of goods sold. And so the uh, beginning finished goods inventory cost was uh, 148,000. This amount was actually given to you The beginning finished goods inventory was 148,000. That's where I got this amount to start with. Then we're gonna add the cost of goods manufactured, which I just determined was 925,000. That would tell me the cost of my goods that I had available uh, for sale. So these two combined is how I get the goods available for sale. Now in this problem, they wanted you to determine the finished goods inventory. So that's why I got a question mark there. So you really can't do that until you determine the cost of goods sold. And to get the cost of goods sold, we will take the manufacturing cost per unit, which was $37, and we would multiply that by the number of units that we sold that was given to us at 26,500. So $37 times 26,500. This is where I got the units sold. And this is the cost of those units that, that we uh, manufactured during that period. So that's going to be how we determine the cost of the goods sold. So the manufacturing cost per unit, $37 times the number of units that we sold is 980,500. You need to work backwards to be able to figure out what this question mark is, the ending finished goods inventory. And I've done that for you right here and it's showing up in red because it's an, an amount that's gonna be subtracted from the goods available for sale. But what I did is I took this one million and uh, I took the 980,500 and I subtracted from it the 1,073,000 uh, amount of goods that I had available for sale. And what that will leave you with is the ending finished goods inventory cost. So this is the cost of the ending finished goods inventory. And that's the answer that they wanted uh, you to put down. They wanted the value of the ending inventory that would be reported on the financial statements. And that value is this amount right here. But there's another way that you could have calculated that. So I've got an or here, and uh, they gave us the units, if you notice that within the problem itself, they gave you the beginning finished goods units. So we knew what that was. And we knew what the units produced were, so you add those together to get the units that are available for sale. We did not know what the ending finished units were, but we did know the units sold, they gave us that. So again, if I take the 26,500 uh, from the uh, 29,000, it will leave me with 2,500 units. That's how many finished goods units I have available uh, I have an ending inventory. Those ending inventory units multiplied by the cost of the um, manufacturing cost per unit, this 2,500 times 37 will give me the 92,500. And you see it equals the amount that we came up with above. So either way you can do this. Um, and also I've just got it restated here, finished goods inventories, finished goods uh, inventory units times the manufacturing cost per unit. That's how you, you would come up with the amount, same amount that I got here. And then you could put it through this form here to see that it matches up with the um, cost of goods sold that we had above. And then if you wanted to, you could take the 148,000 and divide it by 4,000 units, and that would give you the cost of the beginning inventory units that came from last period. 
But I want to caution you on when you're trying to do this, and I'll show you exactly why in, a, in another exercise that they have us doing. Be sure you, you look at, if they give it to you, the cost per unit of your beginning finished goods inventory, because that comes from a previous unit. Notice in this problem, all of the uh, unit costs were $37. That doesn't always have to be the case. Last period, we might have calculated a unit cost that would be different from our manufacturing cost. It just depends on what happened last period. So I was caution you to be careful on calculating uh, your cost per unit or if they give you the cost per unit, um, just be aware that this doesn't always have to be $37. But in this perfect world, it was. And it just means that our manufacturing cost per unit last period was the same as it is this period. And we found that amount of $37 uh, uh, by taking the total manufacturing cost and dividing it by the units that were produced during this period of time. So I've given you two options or two ways you could have calculated this out. I hope this is not confusing to you, uh, but there's sometimes more than one way to look at a problem. I don't care how you calculate as long as you get the right answer. So let's look at the next uh, exercise, which is exercise 2.25. And in exercise 2.25, <clears throat> it's basically the same information that you were given a while ago. It's just that they're asking you now for the gross margin percentage for the last year. And before you could um, do the gross margin percentage, you would want to find your sales. And to get the sales, it would be the sold units times the selling price per unit. That was actually given to you. So you sold 26,500 units. The selling price was $60 each. You simply multiply those two and it'll give you $1,590,000. The cost of goods sold comes from exercise 2.24. So if you wanna click on this sheet right here, you could go back to 2.24 and you could look for the cost, cost of goods sold amount, which was 980,500. That's your cost of goods sold amount there. And we'll plug that in right here, 980,500. That came from the previous exercise. Your gross margin is the same thing as gross profit. So you'll subtract your cost of goods sold from your sales to get your gross margin and the dollar amount is $609,500. They also wanted you to calculate this as a percentage. So what you would do to find the gross margin percentage is you would simply divide um, your 609,500 by the total sales dollars. So we took the 609,500, divide it by 1,590,000, and that'll give you 38.33%. And that's the answer that they wanted for exercise 2.25. So I'm gonna move on to exercise 2.26. And if my memory is correct, it too is uh, the same information that's brought forward. They're asking you a different question. Well, maybe I didn't remember it correctly. So anyway, these were multiple choice questions that are in your um, textbook. If you're wondering where I'm getting these exercises from. from. And uh, one of the uh, multiple choice questions was, it says the ability to assign a cost directly to a cost object by means of a causal relationship. That causal relationship is, uh, um, cause and effect, basically. And what that means is that it's traceable to uh, the cost object, and we call that traceability. 
So the ability to assign a cost directly to a cost object by means of a causal relationship is traceability. So cause and effect, uh, what drives the cost could be from cause and effect, and we could trace that to be able to get it to back to a direct cost. And that's all they wanted for exercise 2.26. Moving on to exercise 2.27, you've got a new problem. It says selected information concerning the operations of a company for the year ended December 31st is as follows. And so they give us information about the units produced were 20,000 for this company. They sold 18,000 units. The direct materials used, uh, they calculated for you. So you didn't have to start with beginning direct materials, add your purchases to it, and back out your ending direct materials. They just gave you the amount that was used here. The direct labor incurred was 40,000. Your factory overhead total was 74,000. So these three items are cost here, whereas these two items are units. It says work in process inventories at the beginning of the year were zero. Beginning inventory of finished goods was 9,650 for 1,000 units. Cost of goods sold was 174,600, and they want to know what was the company's cost of goods inventory at the end of the period at December 31st. What is the finished goods cost of at December 31st? So again, I've shown you some computations here. Uh, what I decided to do uh, in this case was to go ahead and start with our direct materials cost that was given to us, that 80,000 is just brought down here. We're gonna add our direct labor and our manufacturing overhead to that. Those were these three costs that would be combined together to get total manufacturing cost of 194,000. Since there was no beginning work in process and no ending work in process, the cost of goods manufactured is equal to the total manufacturing cost. To find the cost per unit, we would take 194,000 and we would divide that by the number of units produced, which was 20,000. So 194,000 divided by 20,000 gives you $9.70 as the cost of goods manufactured for this period of time. So then we're gonna put it through the cost of goods sold. We start with our beginning finished goods inventory dollar-wise that they uh, gave to us was $9,650. They also gave to us our units of beginning finished goods inventory. And I want to show you what has happened here to the cost per unit. Remember, beginning finished goods inventory comes from the last period. Last period, our cost per unit was $9.65. I got that by taking 1,000 units and dividing it into uh, 9,650, and that will give me your cost per unit. When we know what the beginning finished goods inventory dollar cost is, we're gonna look for our cost of goods manufactured. We determined that earlier at 194,000. The number of units that we produced was given to us at 20,000. So again, if I take my 194,000 and divide it by 20,000 units, it gives me $9.70. Well, I already knew that because we already calculated up here. You could just plug it in down here. To find the total goods available for sale, you add your beginning finished goods inventory and your cost of goods manufactured together. The total units that I have available for sale are 21,000. 1,000 plus 20,000 is 21,000. 
what they were asking me for was what was the cost of my finished goods ending inventory. And we didn't know that. But, and we didn't know also that we had 3,000 in ending inventory. I calculated that. But what we did know is that we had 174,600 as the cost of goods sold that was given to you. And we also knew, or we could find the number of units if we knew how much our manufacturing costs were per unit this period of time. So if you divided $9.70 into 174,600, it will give you 18,000 units, which were your units sold. They also gave you this information up above. So there's a couple of different ways you could look at that, but they gave you that information. And so I just plugged it in. What you have to find is the number of units. And so to find the number of units in finished goods ending inventory, I would take the 18,000 and deduct it from the 21,000. That will leave me with 3,000 of finished goods inventory that I would multiply by, notice this cost here is different than the manufacturing cost per unit. And the reason for that is twofold. Partly it's because we had a thousand units that were manufactured last period at $9.65. So what you would need to do is you would need to determine this $9.68. One way to do that is to take what's in sale E26, which was my uh, 29,050. Uh, One way to find this $9.98 is to take this $29,050 and divide that or and divide that by uh, C26, which is your finished goods units of so 3,000. So I took 29,050 and divided it by 3,000. And that gave me a cost per unit $9.68. Or you could have just said uh, $104,600 from $203,650 gives you $29,050. That's the amount that they wanted. They wanted the total cost, but you can find it in different ways. If you know how many units you have on hand of your finished goods and you know what the cost per unit is, you can simply multiply these two and it'll give you this amount. But perhaps the easiest way to get this is to subtract um, 174,600 from uh, 203,650 and that will give you the cost of goods sold. So, I've got a notation here for you too that says note that the finished goods beginning inventory unit cost is $9.65. This is from last year's ending inventory cost and this cost is different from the manufacturing cost per unit during the period. So be careful when you're trying to find the cost of the finished goods ending inventory. It might depend on what has happened in a previous period of time. And that is the case for this, this particular problem. Now, I took it a step further and wanted to show you what would happen if we were using the last in first out method of valuing inventory. You didn't have to do this, but I just wanted to prove it further. Uh, first of all, we could determine what we sold by taking the 18,000 units that they gave us that we sold times uh, $9.70. Uh, that would give you what we call the cost of goods sold. And so I don't have that in there, but I uh, probably need to uh, put that in there. That $174,600 is cost of goods sold. You can see it's the same amount that we got there. It's just further proving that this is cost of goods sold. So um, the, this probably should say the cost 
of goods sold is determined by taking the 18,000 units times $9.70, which will give you 174,600. It's the same thing that we got there. But what I really wanted to point out to you is that the ending inventory, if we're using the LIFO method, if we sold 18,000 units and we had 21,000 available for sale, um, all 18,000 of those units uh, would have been sold at, if we're using the last in, first out, they would have come from those 20,000 units. So if we sold 18,000 units of 20,000 units, we have 2,000 units left over at 970, and we have the 1,000 units that we had to start with at 965. So if you multiply 1,000 units times 965, it'll give you um, 9,650, and if you take 2,000 units at 970, it will give you 19,400. The two of these added together would be the cost of your finished goods uh, in the inventory. You can see that that matches up. That's just another way to look at it. Or yet, there's an, uh, yet another way you could look at it if you use the average cost method. What we did here is took um, what the unit cost was on D23, uh, which was 965. I added to it 970, and then I divided that total amount by two, and that would give me $9.68. If I multiplied $9.68 times 3,000, it will give me my 29,000 um, and, and this is 25 here. So it'd be 39. Let me see if I got my calculations right. B39. Was nine dollars and sixty-eight cents. Times three thousand. gives you 29,025. So I guess that we shouldn't have done it as an average here. Let me type that in one more time and see if it comes up to the same amount. Um, let's see. Put in the equal sign and I put in $9.68. And I multiply that by 3,000. It's going to give me $29,000. 40 and if we have a rounding error in here Check on that. Let's see if I can move this out of the way here. All right, let me see here if we changed. We changed that back to a number. Gives us nine dollars and sixty-eight cents. 
Let's see if we, oh yeah, it's a rounding error. That's why it's coming up with different numbers there. Um, so it depends on how you round it as to what the information is here. So it's just a rounding error. I apologize for that. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. The correct answer is 29,050 according to the way they wanted you to round it in your Cengage problems. So let's just leave it at that. Um, and so I'm gonna stop here and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.